What's going on guys and girls? Welcome back to another episode of Outdoors with Creed. Uh, today's video, it's a little overdue. Things have been a little crazy around here, but we're about to talk about it. But before we get into it, uh, this video today is going to be sponsored by none other than Monster Bass, because this is going to be a Monster Bass video. But also, I would like to say that today's video is going to be sponsored by Black Hawk Holsters. You guys, whenever I'm doing a video or posting something about my tactical shooting, especially when it's dealing with my pistol, you always hear me talk about my Black Hawk holster. Uh, I want to say my very first holster that I ever bought back when I was in the Navy was a Black Hawk holster. Uh, nothing real special about it. You know, it was a regular old nylon style leg holster, but that was kind of the beginning for me. Since then, all of the holsters that I have bought and used have been Blackhawk holsters. Uh, I really love their, their Serpa holsters, but my favorite holster now is their new T-Series holsters that they have come out with. Those things are awesome. Uh, if you have a, a light attached to your holster, whether it's the stream light or the Surefire, their holsters will fit that light and the pistol that you're running with. They also accommodate if you put red dot sights on your pistols. Uh, not only holsters, but Blackhawk also has a lot of other great tactical equipment, uh, protective equipment and stuff like that. So whether you're just out there on the range doing some shooting or you're trying to get yourself set up for that uh, tactical scenario as well as your everyday patrol setup, Blackhawk has you covered. So check, uh, hit that link down below, check out blackhawk.com and get you started on your tactical gear. Now, let's jump into today's video, which is a monster bass for the month of March. I had to think about that, y'all, that's crazy. We're already two months into the year of 20. 22. Uh, this is March Monster Bass box. Uh, I don't. I, I'm pretty sure they're gonna do the bags again, y'all. But I'm not 100. But I like the way how Rick is switching up the colors on these boxes. So that's pretty cool. Uh, it's the traditional box. You know, you open it up. It has your ruler uh, for you to measure your fish as well as I don't think any other box does this because I have not used any of the other monthly subscription boxes but Monster Bass has the calendars here to let you know what period we should be in and what the fish are doing so that way you can select your lures accordingly right now we're in the spring so there are three stages to a bass life cycle in the spring pre-spawn, spawning, and post-spawn. So it tells you right there, springtime, you're going through three different cycles. It tells you your water temperature, typically water should be anywhere from 50 degrees to 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So in that area, it's probably gonna determine if the fish are in that pre-spawn, spawn, or the post. It gives you their cycle, and then it gives you your lure suggestions here for each one of them, the pre-spawn, the spawn, and the post-spawn. And it does it throughout the uh, the year, summer, fall, winter. So this is to help you pick out your lures. So that way you're not going through your entire tackle box. This should help you simplify what lures you need to concentrate on and also the techniques as well as the different retrieves for those techniques. And if you're not familiar with Monster Bass, Monster Bass is a monthly subscription. You can click the link down below, get you a Monster Bass subscription. Um, I believe we're still using the code SAVE10, save $10 off your first month subscription. Uh, I know they have one going on now where it says if you buy three a three month subscription, you'll get that fourth one for free. So again, click the link that'll be down below and go ahead and get yourself set up with one of these Monster Bass. You will not be disappointed. The value amount of the lures that are in these boxes, when you look at how much you pay for this monthly subscription compared to what you would pay if you went to a tackle shop or off of one of the major retail 
stores, whether it's online or the actual store, you will, you're saving a ton of money by doing this. Plus this introduces you to a lot of other baits that you probably wouldn't even pick up at a tackle shop. So again, click the link down below, check out Monster Bass. And let's jump back into this. This is the month of March. And what they did this month is they decided they're gonna focus on techniques, specific techniques. So this month they chose the Texas rig. Uh, Texas rig, it's been around for a long, long time. It's a very easy rig. I would say this is probably a beginner rig. It's very easy to set up. It's very easy to fish. It's almost one of those rigs where the only way you can mess up fishing a Texas rig is to not be fishing a Texas rig. So let's jump into this book here and see what we got. So we've got a pretty much like a welcome page here from the founder, Rick, uh, about Monster Bass and what his goals were when he came up with Monster Bass. Uh, the history of the Texas rig, you know, why why is it called Texas rig? As far as I knew, it was just, it's called Texas rig. But here it is. It's called the Texas rig, but it's called bass the world over, angler from Alabama to Zimbabwe uses this weedless wonder the texas rig can put a soft plastic lure where others dare not go 1949 nick cream introduced the first artificial worm designed for bass fishing it came equipped with a set of exposed hooks that snagged bass and everything else in their path flash forward a few decades cream worm manufactured in tyler texas was the one was one of the most popular lures on the booming bass fishing scene. Cream started adding a slip sinker with this worm and instructions on how to fish them in weedless fashion. His 1964 catalog was the first to mention the Texas rig by such name. So, Nick Cream, if you guys remember those old packages of cream lures, that was founded by Nick Cream and he was the one who introduced the Texas rig and it was manufactured in Tyler, Texas. So that's where we get the name Texas rig. And just as this said, it has caught fish from East Coast to West Coast, North to South. It has caught fish all over. And there's really no way, no wrong way of messing this up. So it's a great lure. I use it all the time. I've always got this rig tied up on my deck. I have a rod dedicated for fishing Texas rig. Uh, it varies sometimes the way I fish it. Uh, sometimes I fish it with a bobber stop. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I will put one on there. But if I kind of want that weight to slide away from the, uh, the lure, I will slide that bobber stop up the line a little bit to give me a little bit of room to play. And then there are times where I will bring that bobber stop down because I want the weight to stay right there close to the bait. It just depends on where I'm fishing and what I'm trying to think the fish are doing. So again, like I said, there's really no wrong way of fishing this other than to not be fishing. it. But here we go. Lesson one, Texas rig basics. So the basics of a Texas rig. Look at that. They got it all right there for you. There's your basics. Okay. This is an easy rig, guys. So, uh, I don't have any fishing line in here. Give me a second, I'm gonna step away. I have an old reel with some fishing line on it. So, here we go. I'm just gonna peel off some of this. some fishing line I don't know how big this fishing line is or what the test pound I don't know if you guys can see that right there but there's some fishing line so in this month's 
size box. Again, we're focusing on the Texas rig. We do have a few other lures that I will talk about, but let's focus on the Texas rig. So, in the box, they send you a pack of Mustad EWG hooks. Uh, we got three aught and four aught. So we got four hooks in here, two three aught hooks and two four aught hooks. Monster Bass has sent their Texas rig kit, basically is what I'm gonna call it. Uh, flipping and punching also. You have bobber stops, beads, and two weights. And that's pretty much all you need for a Texas rig. I'm gonna show you guys how easy this thing is to set up, okay? Probably should've left this on the uh, on the reel there. So, we're gonna tie up an easy setup. Texas rig tells you to start here, thread your fishing line through the nose of the weight. You know what? We don't need that book because I'm gonna tell you how to do this. Here we go. Now, this is how easy this is. Okay, so, whichever way you choose to go with this, uh, if you're gonna put on a barber stop, first thing you would do, I'm not gonna put one on, but I'll show you guys. You take your barber stops here, and you peel one off. You now just pull it to the side to separate it, and I don't know if you guys can see, but on this piece of wiring, there's a hole, kind of like you would thread a uh, needle. But you would put your fishing line through that hole on that wire so it'll hang there. What I like to do is just pull the line like this, so that way you're pinching it. And then you would take your other hand and pinch the barber stop right there, that little black bead right there by my thumb, right here. And you just slide that onto the fishing line. You know what, who cares? I'm gonna do it. So you just pinch it, pull it onto the fishing line, and you just keep pulling. And there you go. Barber stop is no longer there. Barber stop is now on my fishing line. So then what I would do is slide that up. See that? One hand. Sorry. This end. Down to there is my barber stop. That little dot that's floating right here by my face. That's my barber stop. So what I would do then after that, what you do, uh, you would take your weight. Uh, weight will depend on the thickness of your cover. If you're flipping, if you're uh, casting into heavy mats, which is what uh, a big clump of vegetation in the water, if it's real thick, you'd want to go with a heavier weight because you got to get that bait through that big old mat. If it's uh, more of a sparse grass, meaning there's grass or some kind of vegetation in that area, but it's not real thick, you could probably go down on your weight. Also, depending on the activity of the fish, if the fish are really active and reacting, you could probably go up just a little bit on your weight because when that lure drops down in front of them, you want it to get their attention immediately and they turn on it. Or sometimes on that initial fall, the fish will hit it then. So you want something that's gonna pull your bait down pretty fast. If the fish are not very active, they're acting a little finicky, you probably need something with a bit of a slower presentation. So you wanna go down on your weight size, you got enough weight to get your bait out there, but then that lure will have some resistance in the water and it's gonna slow that rate of fall down to give that bait time to fall in front of that fish and make them react that way. So that will depend on your cover that you're fishing plus how active are your fish. But basically what you want to do, uh, bullet weights or flipping weights, whichever one you call them, uh, for the purpose, I'm gonna call this a bullet weight, but how that the weight makes that bullet shape, you want the nose of the weight to go on first. 
So you just thread your weight onto your fishing line that way and then just let it go. See that, that's the purpose of that barber stop. It's holding that weight right there in place. Hang on, let me slide over just a little bit. Bang, right there. That bullet weight is floating basically, but that's because that barber stop is holding it. So that's what you want. Now at this point, if you wanna add a bead, this comes with six of the beads from Monster Bass. I'm not gonna get one, but you can see those beads right there by my finger. Uh, that is to A, protect your knot on your hook when you tie it from that weight hitting against it. But also when that weight hits that bead, it causes, it gives off some noise. That helps the fish locate your bait just a little bit easier. So if you wanna put one of those on, you can. If you don't want to, you don't have to. This one, we're not gonna put on a bead, but then next step is you get your your hook I'm gonna get these this is a four -aught. and you then tie your hook on I like to use the uh, Palomar knot I use the Palomar knot for probably 90 percent 95% of my stuff is tied with a Palomar the only thing that I don't use the Palomar on is probably my flipping setup, which again, the flipping setup is still a Texas rig setup. It's just the knot I use is the snail knot, and that's because it causes that hook to do something different. Uh, plus, I use a straight shank hook for that. So that's the only reason why I don't use the Palomar, but Palomar knot is real easy. Here, I'll, do the, I'll start this over because I just did all of this without really explaining. The way I like to do the Palomar knot, you take your tag end of your line and go through the eye of the hook, okay? What I then like to do is take that tag end again and go back through the eye the other way as if you were going to basically run it back through and pull the line off. But you hold on to it and create that loop right there. Let's see here. Nope, still can't see it. Trying to get it. See where my hands is right here? There's a loop right there. And you want to make sure you got enough tag in. So what you do is you take this loop here that you've created and you just do an overhand knot. So take that whole loop and do an overhand knot. If I can get it because this line isn't cooperating with me because I pulled it off of that reel and it was kind of bunched up a little bit there we go now once you've made your overhand knot what you do is you still take that loop that you started with and you want to pass your hook through that and then pull all of that up over this other knot now when you're dealing with fluorocarbon, that friction, when you pull this, is gonna burn your line. So what you wanna do is wet it. And then pull it down, cinch it down on there. And there you go. You have tied a Palomar knot. Then your tag in right here, you can clip that off. I don't have scissors or anything with me right now. Hang on. Okay. I don't ever have a box cutter on my boat. I use I have snips or some kind of scissors. But there you go. Then you cut your tag end off. And that is your Texas rig setup. Now, next step is lure. Okay. Now in this bag set this down for a second in this bag we have a pack of missile baits baby d bombs uh, these are great for flipping and pitching it's a small little creature bait so you got this small little beaver style creature bait 
great for flipping and pitching. With this size, this is the baby D bomb. I would use the uh, three odd hook that came in the box. I would use the three odd hook on this, and then this would be great for flipping and pitching. That would be your close quarters battle when you're fishing, flipping it in there, hopping it a few times, getting it back out. And then we have a pack of Strike King cutter worms. I love these worms. These worms are awesome. Now the way they come packaged, you have this little piece right here, pull that off. And this worm right here is awesome. And with the hook that I got, this would be perfect. This four out hook would go perfect with this. Now this tail, there is a way that you want to rig this. You want this to either be up this way, like this, or down. So when you rig your hook on here, make sure you have that orientated to where it's going to be in one of those positions. So you want to come in the middle here. I like to go down until you get to that first bend right there in the hook and then bring it out. Run that worm all the way up that shank, rotate it, flip it, pull the eye of it down into the worm so that it's sitting like that. And now what you want to do, line it up, see where you want that hook to come out at. Give it a nice pinch. Bend it up a little bit. Bring it down on there. Sometimes, a lot of times, I like to bring it out like this. And then when you push it back up on there, you want to text pose it. See how that hook is sitting there? And then you just kind of pinch and pull forward pull up that way when it comes back it covers up that hook point to help make it weedless that is a good way of fishing it right there or whenever you first whenever you first hook it you don't bring it all the way out you just bury it in there like that right there. Now your weight will sit down on your lure like that and that is a Texas rig. That's pretty much all it is to it guys. Uh, what I like to do is I like to flip it out there. Either you can flip it or you can cast it out there but what I like to do is drop my rod tip down towards the water, take up the slack and then you can either slowly Pull it up and drag it on the bottom and then it'll kind of come up and then once you get it up as you lower your rod back down you want to take up that slack so you can pull up on it again you're moving the bait with the rod not the reel the only time you work the reel is to take up that slack that you created when you lift it up you want to go a little bit fast with it you reel up your slack and then hop it reel up your slack Give it a couple of hops, let it fall back down, reel up your slack, give it a couple more hops. That's basically it, guys. Texas rig, you can also, if you want to keep it on the bottom, instead of hopping up, what you do is have your rod, I would say, lowered a little bit or about uh, waist high. Reel up your slack and then drag to the side. I'm right-handed. I, I hold the rod in my left hand, so what I like to do is reel up the slack and then I like to pull it to my right. As I turn back facing the lure, as I'm turning, I reel up the slack and then I pull again. Now you can turn to the other side and pull it back to your left, but by pulling that way with your rod down or at least straight out and pulling to the side, it keeps that lure down on the bottom, keeping that bottom contact. That will help you identify any cover that's down there as well as it's helping you keep that bait down fishing on the bottom. That is a good way of finding fish. Also getting a visual of what's down there on the bottom of the lake. That way you know how to fish uh, and you can identify where those fish are at. 
So that's the Texas rig. Uh, the other two baits that we got in this market box. We have a, a jig. This is the Queen Tackle half ounce hammerhead jig in green jelly color. We have some switchblade. Uh, these are basically the blades also from Queen Tackle. These are the blades that come on chatter baits. So you can take these, take your favorite swim jig, throw one of these on there, and now you've turned that thing into a chatter bait. So this would be a good combination. Also, like I said, take your favorite swim jig, turn it into a chatter bait. Good options right there. And then we have a Yozuri one knock lipless crankbait. Uh, it's a sinking bait. So this one would be good. It's called the blue chrome. That is a nice flash pattern and everything. This, this would be great. And it's not too big, so it's about the size of most of your, your shads and bait fish that are in your waters. And then we have our Monster Bass Hammerhead uh, Alex Rudd Edition Silent Square Bill. This is in the two and two and three quarter in the length and seven sixteenth ounce. So this is great for that shallow fishing, silent running. It's not too aggressive. It's a very subtle crankbait. Uh, this this is going to get you a lot of fish. Throw this thing around cover. Rocks. Uh, rip wrap. Stumps. Logs. That bill will hit that stuff and deflect. In that moment that it's rising up after deflecting, that's usually when those fish will hit it. Uh, these are good baits to have tied on as a search bait to find those fish. And then if you need to slow it down to really get them, then you throw that Texas rig out there on them and really nail them. So this month is a great, great box. Um, I've got a tournament coming up uh, this weekend. I can guarantee you, I've already got a Texas rig tied up and I've already got a couple of crankbaits set up in jigs. So everything in this box, I will probably be using this weekend in my tournament, hopefully, it's gonna get me some fish in the boat. And I just noticed this, guys, when I was looking on the back of this thing, this book here has so much information, lots and lots of information. Uh, you have the basic Texas rig, you have Texas rig advance, which is where they're getting into more of the flipping and pitching. Uh, he's also incorporating this, learn from a legend this month. He chose Bill Dance. Bill Dance is, he was my idol growing up for fishing. Like, I have some stories that I could tell you guys about me watching Bill Dance on his show. I'm not gonna tell you right now, but maybe one day I will let you in on some of those secrets. Um, lesson three for this one, jig modifications. Like I said, take that jig and uh, put one of those switch blades on it. You can use the worms as your trailers for your jigs. Uh, it has this right here, your locations, uh, water depth. It's telling you what's the idle spots to fish these lures. Rick is giving you everything you need to know to fish these lures. Lesson number four, fishing that lipless crankbait there. Uh, water depth again, and he's picked out some of the guys who or like masters, I guess you could say, at fishing these styles. The lipless crankbait, Alex Rudd. Check out his YouTube channel, Alex Rudd Fishing. This guy has some really good stuff that he puts out. Lesson five, you have the square bill crankbait that we were talking about. So, I mean, lots and lots of good stuff. Moon phases, like this is all stuff that you need to incorporate into your fishing to help you determine where those fish are at and how they're acting so you know how to attack those fish uh, like just awesome awesome stuff but on the back here he gives you a sneak peek of what the next month's box is gonna be hopefully you guys didn't see that because I don't want to ruin it for you you will just have to wait and see what next month's box is gonna be or 
Drop down there, click that link, sign up for Monster Bass, and that next month's box will be sent to your house. Uh, that's all I got, guys. Thanks for tuning in. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. Make sure you click on that bell so you get notified whenever I put out my videos. Also, if you like the videos and the information that I put out, please smash that thumbs up button. Leave me some comments down below. And do not forget, I have my own lures as well, Outdoors with Creed. I will leave that link down below for you to uh, place your orders for those. You place your order, and then I will make those orders and get them sent out to you as soon as I can. I would greatly appreciate that. And again, thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, I'm about to get out of here. I'm hungry. I need to go eat, so I'm about to run into the house. But again, thanks guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys on the next show, and hopefully, I'll see you in the great outdoors.